Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. This is Wendy with Northwest Rider Magazine and I am here with Mark Miner with Miner Pool Buildings. And um, Mark, you're, you're a big supporter of the magazine, so thank you for doing that. Absolutely. We really appreciate it. Um, I wanted to talk to you today a little bit because you build pool buildings. And one of the things I think, you know, when people think of pool buildings, they think of four-sided big metal sided structures yeah sometimes yeah. sometimes not the most appealing right correct right but this is actually a pool building behind us correct and, I mean it's beautiful it's it's got it's got character it has more than just you know the standard four metal sides so yeah so um, when you're looking at a pool building typically most people do immediately jump to this metal sided whether it be big or small nothing that's very appealing um, but post frame buildings, much as you see here, is really just a type of structure, whether it's different than stick frame, um, different than a steel building, it's just a type of construction that lends itself very economically to size. So the bigger you get, the more economical it gets. That being said, as you get to siding and any type of design, this is what would be called a monitor or raised center aisle way design if you were to equate it with a horse structure. This actually doesn't happen to be a horse structure. This happens to be a guy's personal shop. Um, that being said, you can design it, whether it be Gambrel or Raid Center Aisle Way. If you want any design that you want, we can do, and any type of siding that you want, you can have on it. It's just you start from a base. Yeah, and the base, so you were telling me a little bit about the difference, and so it's a, it's the foundation is different between the two types of buildings, is that? Correct. Um, with a typical, let's equate it to a house, typically houses are a stick frame design. You have a foundation wall that goes on all sides of your building. That foundation wall is concrete, it'll come up a couple of feet, and then you have stick frame or um, wood that goes every two feet 16 inches depending on the design all the way around the structure okay. um, there's a lot of wood it's quite time consuming the foundation costs quite a bit to do yeah. a building like this and I don't know if the audience can actually see it but you can see in the corner you can see something green at the very corner of the building sticking below that would be a post that's inside of the structure it's a point loaded system that every 10 12 it all depends on the design feet you have a post and all of the loading of the roof gets point loaded at that point. I see. So now you can span distances, you can span do larger free spans also. We can do free spans up to a hundred foot. Okay. Um for depending on what the needs are and you don't have the cost of the foundation walls going in and it, it cuts down on both the construction and the labor and on the material side. So it's a more economical way to get a barn, an arena, a shop, you know, Correct. basically any kind of outbuilding. Correct. So um, you you guys kind of do it all. You do you do barns and shops, obviously the shop here mm -hmm. and arenas as well. Correct. Um, and uh, you've been in business for a while. Maybe you could tell us just a little bit about minor pool buildings and and what your service area is and how if someone has questions about how to get started on this how do they get in touch with you yeah um so we started roughly about 1977 uh, my father started the company um, so we've been in business a little over 40 years um, i have been doing work on and off with my father since i was that big swinging yeah. a hammer you know how it goes yeah family business um but i started doing it full time after graduated from college so i've been doing it full time here for about about 20 a little over 20 years now um i my father retired in 2012 and now i run the company um we service all of oregon and washington um we do do all different types of structures that we do during the summer months and kind of during this time frame is kind of the last, that's the busiest time for horse structures because of needing drier ground. A lot of times you're working out in fields, yeah. you're working in areas that are very, can be dirt or muddy yeah. as the rain comes. So you try to do those, schedule them 
earlier in the spring to get for a summer build. Mm -hmm. um, and then we start this time of year from now farther or farther on, we kind of transfer into a lot of shops, storage units, I mean, you name it. Yeah. Um, so usually in the summer is when we do a lot of our horse facilities, even though that we do have a couple still coming up on our slates here for the winter. So how does it work? Um, I mean, if somebody want, like they know they purchase property and they know that in the spring or summer mm -hmm. or whatever, they're gonna wanna sit down and have something, you know, drawn up and built. Absolutely. Um, how, what's the process for that? So the first process is um, finding out when you wanna build. I mean, do we wanna build now, six months, you know, a year? Typically you want about to start the process with calling us and getting pricing you usually want about five to six months ahead of time you don't want to call okay you know it's june and i want to build in august yeah sometimes <laughs> it works but typically depending on the scale of the project doesn't always work out sure. so usually you want about six months lead time uh, the next thing is is come with some type of a budget in mind because these buildings can vary greatly on cost sure. depending on the square footage yeah the span you need and how much work needs to be put inside just like a house you can have a house but the house can go from 100 bucks a foot yeah. to 300 dollars a foot depending on what you put inside so yeah. you have to have some type of a budget now if you don't really have a budget but you're kind of thinking size you can call us and we can help narrow that down just over the phone real quickly give you some rule of thumb costs that will at least get you close okay um but at least to have some type of idea in mind of what you're trying trying to attain for a structure and a budget and then we can kind of design it around that sure that makes sense and so i mean really now if they're thinking about spring and summer builds they need to be calling relatively soon to try to get Correct. Together, yeah. Together and By the time we get through stuff, I mean, really, we start doing our bookings. Usually, our bookings start. We start the equestrian side with our stall barns, our riding arenas, round pins, all that stuff. Usually, starts around first part of May, which means that we would want to have stuff locked in by, by the latest March. Sure. Um, but ideally, you know, probably February, late January. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's all my questions. Is there anything else that you would want to share with, with everybody about, you know, anything they need to keep in mind when they're getting prepared or? Yeah. Um, as you try to go down this road and if you decide that you do want to do, um, whether it be just a personal riding arena or a full blown equestrian center, um, you know, as I'd mentioned before, first of all, come with a design. Sec a design of what roughly what you want not a design of what you want it to look like but at least an idea in your ideas. head of what it is because we can go from there um, also budget as I had said but keep in mind as you do a structure a post frame structure that you know your options are limitless whether you want comp roofing metal roofing tile roofing whether you want lap siding wood siding metal siding everything is doable it just okay. depends on what your needs are um, we go all over the state of Oregon and Washington. Uh, we're not, um, we're not just located here in the valley. Um, that being said, we do all types of structures also, but there are minimum square footage. Like we do folding sheds, we or loafing sheds. We do everything, but for us to come out and do a little 12 by 12 or 12 by 24 loafing shed by itself doesn't always make sense financially yeah. for us or our clients so we typically there's a minimum square footage yeah you're looking at you you're, you provide a whole solution basically Correct. so if you were out doing a barn or doing something else and then a loafing shed was part of that project you'd be more than happy to put it in right it just doesn't make economical sense to just do a loafing shed right and one of the last things you know that is nice with our company and with these type of structures are to help meet our clients budgets um, we can do everything turnkey, or we can just do the shelves themselves and have people finish them off. They're very easy to finish off inside also, which can help cool. clients save money. So it's not like yeah. you have to do the entire envelope. Yeah. You can just do a piece of it, get the structure up and kind of, you know, get it done as you, at your, whatever makes sense for you financially. Yeah, that's awesome too. Cause I know, I mean, especially when you're trying to 
put things together at your place, sometimes you can't. You and can't costs add up, the right? Whole cookie, yeah. <laughs> I know. Exactly. So, okay. Well, hey, I really appreciate your time today. And again, I appreciate your support of the magazine. I know our readers do too. And, uh, you know, if you guys have any questions for Mark and his team, I'll put uh, information in the comments um, so that you can get in touch with him. I really appreciate so, your time. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. All right.